short time to be here, so let's do the question and answer part. Um, raise your hand if you have a question and just shout it out, whatever it might be. Anybody have a question? Yes. Um, would it be Daniel when you started um, were your families very supportive or were they mostly worried about you before you mm -hmm. were yeah, Speak up loud, okay, Mark, I'll be here. Um, when you began, were your families more worried about you or were they happy that you were taking action? Was your families happy or were they more worried about you or what was the general feeling? My, my family, oh, they were devastated by that. They couldn't believe, well, number one, no one knew my whereabouts. I spoke of Troy. Troy ran home and he wouldn't tell his mother, nor my, or anybody else <laughs> what had happened. So my mom was even asking him, did he know my whereabouts? And he said no. So, yeah, so my mom called different um the police, the county sheriff, et cetera, they didn't have me in. It was just devastating. In my case, uh, it was both. My father was, was an active activist himself. So he kind of promoted it, but he uh, passed away in 60. So that left my mother withered. And of course, being a mother alone, with two boys left, she was quite worried. Um, in my case, uh, my family, um, my father, um, was very supportive. They were, of course, afraid that we would not make it back. Because you, you've got to understand that they were killing people in this day and time. And there was nobody that you could go to to find out why, if, if like if he had never never come back, they would not have known him. It's just another person gone. Because you do know that those the three uh, voter registration guys have been killed. They were kill, used to killing people. So families, on one hand, wanted to go because they knew it was something that needed to be done. But on the other hand, they were afraid that your life would be taken from you. Because it, was a, it wasn't a threat, it was in many cases promises that you would not make it back. So, it, you know, it was a little of both. I, I have a different perspective because actually I was that family. Uh, I was uh, only 13. I did not get shoved in the bus station like the other guy. Couldn't even go down there because I'm a girl, you know. Yeah. And, <laughs> Parents were more protective of the girls, and I think they still are. But anyway, I know that uh, my my mom was very worried about my brother because there was no information coming to us. You know, we heard that they were arrested, and uh, I think all of the parents were really afraid because parents knew more than the kids. They knew what was happening, you know, they knew there were deaths and all of that. And so that that was very hard on the families. And as a matter of fact, I did not even know that my brother was on death row until maybe a few years ago. I mean, I knew he had, you know, spent those days in jail. And when I'm hearing this as a grown person, <laughs> And my brother was on death row, and I, you know, I was in tears. And uh, when we went to Mississippi to the 50th reunion, uh, and they took us to the various places, you know, they took us to that prison. And I know my brother came to the cell where he was, and that was very emotional for him as well as for me. So the families really suffered as well. 